<laughs> well, welcome. Thank you for coming today, and uh, we'll have a wonderful afternoon. My name is David Hoffmeister, and this is Helena. And Helena has come all the way from southern Sweden uh, by Copenhagen and several places like Bangkok, Thailand, and through Australia. And then we came up from Australia. We just did a tour down there starting about March 3rd. So we were down there about a month. Uh, just going to places where we were invited up along the coast. And we really call these kind of like enlightenment gatherings because self-realization is really uh, a, a very deep inward journey. And I use the path of Course in Miracles. She came from her Course in Miracles book along. I use that path starting back in 1986. And, um, I guess I was just really, really ready for my awakening because uh, I think a lot of it has to do with willingness, but a lot of it has to do with readiness uh, over what would seem to be lifetimes. We prepare ourselves to to let go of the ego thought system and really wake up to our perfect divine oneness. And so, just to give everyone a little background, I came across, uh, I think my conscious spiritual journey started probably back around uh, 1984, where I just started reading lots of esoteric books and books on psychology, philosophy, religion, um, realizing that my Christian background had just uh, given me like the tiniest of starts in this uh, deep journey to awakening, and I was very grateful for it, but I also knew that I had to go much deeper with the journey. And so I was in university from, from 1986, from 1976 to 1986, and around 1984, I think, I started to be more conscious of my spiritual journey. Um, it was back in 1982, my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer, and so I walked, watched him go from like a walking skeleton. Uh, he was very robust and happy, almost like Santa Claus, or uh, you know, somebody who was very, full and alive, and then when he was diagnosed with cancer, it really shook me up it's to start to wonder, what's going on here? What's uh, underneath my perception of this? Why do I have so much grief and distress around the loss of my, my uh, grandfather? So basically, oh, now we've got the, the little angels have come to join us. <laughs> oh, yes. This is Sandy. 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 And Sport. Sport and Sandy. Sport and Sandy. Uh, there comes the licking tongues out. <laughs> Beautiful. So, for me, it was that that catapulted me into this feeling that around cancer and, and so forth, I think a lot of us were raised with, with the ideas that God was, you know, omnipotent, you know, all-powerful and all-knowing and all-loving, and, and yet there were experiences in our lives and on, on earth that didn't seem to fit with that all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful presence. And it really came to me initially that around 1982, when I was very distraught over my grandfather's uh, cancer and his passing, that I thought, I had this thought, there's something fishy about this world, and I don't know what it is. Uh, just something's off, and I don't quite know what it is, and I just had a lot of uh, frustration and anger, and basically I was told internally that the, the problem was in my perception of the world. Just like in the Bible when it talked about looking through a distorted glass. And so I saw that, that my perception was the problem, the problem wasn't the people or the governments or all the things that I thought was the problem. It was a perceptual problem. And then I think I got more aware of that so that by the time the Course came into my life, I actually could read it for about eight hours a day. It was almost like uh, getting thrown a life raft. And it was kind of drowning and wondering where I was going to find meaning. And then this was like a pathway that was saying, well, here's your way. Uh, just grab hold and uh, pull, or hang on, and we'll go forward. I didn't read it consecutively eight hours a day. I had too much ego resistance to 
to it. Uh, so my eyelids would get very, very heavy. My head would start to swivel like that, and, and I would just... At that point, I had enough presence to just be very gentle with myself, you know, feel a prompt to go take a walk, or have a snack, or go for a swim, or something relaxing, just to be very gentle with myself. And then I would come back, and I would use the book more like an oracle, where I would have a question, and instead of reading it in a chronological way, I just popped open the book, and there was the answer. Uh, amazingly, no matter what my question was, I was always just hold the book open gently, and the answer was given. So that process went on for quite a while. Uh, as I said, about eight hours a day for about two and a half years. And then I started to hear the voice of Jesus speaking to me very directly in conversational tones in my mind, and that made my life extremely easy. Uh, he would simply tell me where to go, what to do, who to see, who to call. Uh, if I forgot something, like I was leaving the house and I forgot my keys or something, it was very practical, too, with the very practical things as well as very uh, deep with profound things. Come on in, we're just starting. Great, very late. No problem. We can shift our chairs around any way that you want. We have plenty of pillows if you like to stretch out anything. <laughs> Make yourself at home. So, it was about, um, I would say around 19, around 1990, or right around there, that maybe in the late 1980s, I started hearing Jesus speak to me in very conversational tones. And so, I, I think that's when it was really on. That's when I, I knew I could go really deep with my spiritual awakening, because I had a, a guide giving me very specific instructions. And so, up until that point, it was, you know, listening to music and having conversations with people and doing lots of reading. Uh, I was so touched by so many of the spiritual masters and, and uh, different readings I had had, but, but to actually have a voice in my mind telling me exactly what to do and where to go with such gentleness, I think that was a big speed up for me. And so that started, we'll say, it was like the late 1980s. So by 1991, it didn't take Jesus very long, where he was like, okay, I'm calling you out of the world. Uh, you are now under my direction completely. You've worked the last job that you will work in the worldly sense. Uh, you're working for me now in the Holy Spirit, and um, I can't give you a plan of how it's going to look. Because uh, I was always saying, "Give me like, can you give me like a five-year plan? No, uh, two-year plan? No. I will tell you moment by moment uh, how this will unfold." So it was very much like. Uh, the movie Star Wars, where you know, Luke Skywalker is being instructed by Obi-Wan Kenobi to use the Force. Uh, it was very much like, oh, we're going to wing it, and, and I can't give you a lot of uh, instruction about the future because I'm going to help you undo your belief in it uh, so that you can learn to be present, just fully present. And so that began a very good working relationship uh, with Jesus. And uh, by 1991, I was, I was asked to let go of everything that I had held in this world. Uh, my sense of jobs, careers, um, I basically had paid off my student loans and all my debts by 1991 under Jesus' direction and how to do that. And uh, basically had no ties called worldly ties. I was just free to be of service and go wherever I was asked to go, and do whatever I was asked to do, and just listen and follow. And so that began a process in 1991 of, of travel and just living on divine providence that has been the same for me ever since then, for the last uh, about 18 years now. <laughs> 